Good day, ladies, babies, and gentlemen. Welcome to Idea Sarika release webinar. What's new in our new released version 22.1? So for today, it's me, Adam, a product engineer with an idea Statica. And with me, there is a concrete expert, Lucas. Lucas, how are Hello. you today? I feel really good, excited. Thank you, Adam. And you? <laughs> uh, well, I'm feeling, of course, more than ready <laughs> for this webinar. So let's roll on. Um, all right, we're running on the platform uh, go to webinar. So you are all muted by default, but uh, you can, of course, um, type in your questions, which will be processed and answered during the webinar. And we will select some of them and answer them loud at the end of this um, go. All right. For the agenda, that's pretty straightforward. What's new in all um, the um, groups of our applications for steel concrete BIM links within the 22.1 version? So for the start, let's uh, point out the biggest highlights. Lucas, what is the best for you in this version? Yeah, the, for me, the highlights uh, for steel is uh, fire design, where you were getting a completely uh, brand new analysis in the code check. Uh, also, blood and contact is really great improvements for for uh, steel. And in the concrete, uh, yeah, pre-testing in detail is, uh, from my point of view, the best, the best. And also the thermal analysis because it's completely brand new analysis there, non-stationary heat transfer. And from the point of view of the BIM links, uh, you can look forward for a new UX improvements and uh, better geometry recognition. All right. So now I will say, uh, let's say the overview of uh, the today's content and Let's now focus on each uh, branch of what we have. So I'll start with what's new in steel and show you in details what we prepared for you or more precisely our developers. Uh, so uh, as was mentioned, fire resistance, that's number one, of course, horizontal tying resistance, another new analysis, weld contact plate and weld class check dialogue redesign. I will show you all of that in coming slides. Next to that, some minor improvements, cassette plate uh, operation with the setting of notched member is improved to cut precisely um, plate into the member that is notched and add the weld at the same time. This is now working perfectly. Uh, operation cut now allows a uh, kind of member and welding together at the same time with some complicated cross sections with openings and so on. This is now possible to do uh, freely for any shape. And timber connections, they now show angle to grains in the results and the report. All right, so let's go through each of the um, Improvements, fire resistance, uh, all new analysis and code check. So this is now going to be in uh, connection and member applications um, under all national standards and codes. So not only Eurocode and um, US code, but all our eight um, more standards. How does this work? Uh, you input the material temperature um, into the software for each member and plate separately in case of connection and uh, temperature for bolts and welds is taken from the plates that are connected by these, um, by these items. For member, 
at simple just one temperature for the whole model. All right, we're kind of completing all the design um, measures and uh, necessities by the code with this. And let's see a demo of this feature. So I've got a uh, global analysis software, CI engineer in this case, and I input the uh, fire resistance curve, 15 minutes, get the results with fire um, combinations as well. And what the software gives me is the material temperature. That's the important thing I need for my input into Idea Celica connection. Uh, the software also shows me some uh, the the curve, how the uh, steel is degraded. So I start checkbot and import one of the connections into there, and I can also check the imported combinations. I've got the standard and fire combinations as well. Uh, and I want all of them in case of my connection. I will design it quickly using the connection browser. And in the first step, turn off the fire combinations and just do the standard code check stress strain. Then I switch to fire resistance unselect the standard combinations and leave the fire combinations. And here I input the temperature and select all the items, all the plates, welds, and so on. All right, recalculate, and that's the fire analysis done. Let's go to report and see about the results. Here I can see the, the temperature for each plate, uh, the material uh, degraded parameters, for such a uh, fire temperature and so on. So I've got all the results as per code and I'm ready to go and continue with the rest. What's next is another analysis type, horizontal tying resistance, very um, important check in UK. Our UK customers were calling for that, and here it is. So here um, you analyze one member, you input just the tensile force uh, inducted by the um, horizontal tying, of course, and it works that you've got different material diagram factors and code checks. Again, um, completing, um, the code checks and analysis for total safety and see um, about the demo of this. This is very simple, just a standard code check of such a connection. Then I make a copy of this, switch to horizontal tying analysis, select this member as the analyzed one, and puts the uh, normal tensile force and recalculate and got the appropriate code check with the appropriate uh, factors and different values as is required. So very simple to use, but of course there's a huge power inside the software. But uh, let's move to another feature. Uh, again, uh, a wish from our customers made through weld and contacts on the same edge. This is uh, for, uh, especially for countries where they use uh, precise construction uh, procedures on site, um, such as, uh, machine edges uh, of members to ensure the um, perfect transfer of, um, of a load from the member into, for example, a base plate of a foundation. Yeah, so we have added this into Idea Statica connection. How does this work? Um, you can add a contact on an edge where uh, a weld is already existing. This was not possible before. So you have now 
a wealth and contacts together and since you start to um, load this um, this member and this connection the weld is utilized first so it starts to take the the load the stresses uh, rises and then the contact uh, takes action and transfers all the rest of the of the pressure of course it's compression only contact nothing for shear or tension or bending or whatever of course of course, this gives us more design options and more precise results and models. Great news. Another one uh, that's a very nice utility for all of us uh, doing models and designing connections. Uh, plate and well class check. Um, this is now by default on since this version. And this gives us uh, immediate information if there is any clash of plates or welds. So uh, modeling under control, and we can save time by preventing mistakes. This is, uh, the software gives you warning in the 3D scene as well as highlights the, 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 the clash and the transparent mode of the model. All right, this is pretty useful, a comfy um, feature. Uh, last thing from me, uh, just to mention dialogue redesign, we wanna have our applications not only perfectly functional, but also nice looking, of course. So we unified the, all the small dialogues and small windows and also activated the hotkeys. So enter to confirm, escape to close the dialog and we'll be adding more hotkeys and coming patches. So that's for the better handling. All right, that was uh, for, the, for the features to, uh, to show you. Let's sum it up. Idea Aesthetica for Steel in this version 22.1. So it can be even more safe with new types of analysis, fire design and horizontal tying analysis. So you can deliver your projects complete and perfectly um, done and safe. You can be more effective with the improved uh, control during a modeling and it can also be faster, better to some minor UI improvements. So that's for steel. And now I will give, oh, sorry. I forgot uh, we've prepared a poll for you. So get ready. Uh, we have a question for you. Which feature of those presented now did you miss the most in the application connection? So where are you calling? for fire resistance, horizontal tying, plate and weld class check, or welded contact on the same edge. So let me uh, start, launch the poll. And now I ask you to do the polling. You should see this on your screen. If you don't, please maximize the window of your go to screen. And this should allow you to vote. All right, more than half of our attendees today have voted. By the way, we've got almost 400 people here, which is very nice. And we are really happy for that. So a few more seconds to finish the voting. All right, all right. let me close that and share the results with you. Okay, so that's, uh, let's say, three thirds fire resistance, plate and weld class check, weld and contact at the same time, horizontal tying just 10%. I guess uh, almost 
all of these 10 percent are uh, our users from uk They're, they really need us <laughs> this this feature lucas what do you think about it any comments yeah i was i was anticipating that the fire resistant will be the most voted and uh it's in the third ah, place so. yeah so but as i can see the plate and the world clash check is uh more important for the users so yeah, yeah. i think it's like a, a immediate help right for, mm -hmm. for all of us cool all right thank you for this now uh, let me hide this and finally give word to lucas and his concrete part yeah thank you adam i will take a presenter and i hope you can see my screen right now can you confirm yes, Adam? That, yeah, perfect, thanks. So let's continue in the concrete. Uh, what we have in the concrete, um, what we are looking forward. Uh, the concrete is great again. So let me mention uh, some highlights, uh, what we've done in the version 22.1 for uh, for concrete. Uh, you can looking forward for the completely uh, new code check of the pre-stress details. Uh, due to implementation of the service elevated element state and uh, new measure behind uh, application Idiastica detail and also brandly new uh, thermal analysis which uh, which um, let's say uh, breaking the limits for structure which are exposing to the to the fire so brand new analysis and also some uh, minor improvements in the idea statica member like uh, simplified method for shear and torsion uh, also i think a big news are haunches uh, which gives you more more design options in the in the in the member and some minor minor uh, improvements uh, from the point of view of the tangent stiffening effect for reinforcement in the uh, in the member. But let's go on. Let's go on to the first pre-stressing in the in the detail. Uh, until this time, the code check of the cracks, deformation, and the stress limitation for uh, pre-stress discontinuity regions uh, were quite a huge problem that engineers hadn't solved or the solution was very complicated. So uh, we are happy that um, to announce that the complete code check over Pristas discontinuity, discontinuity regions uh, is out. And right now you can design and code check, for example, the whole Pristas beam with the openings uh, in the detail, uh, according to error code uh, for uh, ultimate limit state and the service service limit state also so this is the reason why we have a complete uh, complete code check of the pre-stressed details in uh, application idiastic detail uh, to the code checks uh, one uh, from the important code check is the decompression where the tendon has to be in the compression area of the concrete otherwise the corrosion and other factors can influence the lifetime of the structures so uh, you can see it's there also the stress limitation for concrete and the and the tendon also the crack propagations and many more many more um, some typical detail um, typical example of the problematic region where engineers weren't able to detect the cracks and nonlinear deformations and uh, this is the diaphragm so right now you can solve the typical discontinuity regions like this in uh, the application idea Statinka uh, without, without any problems. It's a very easy and fast solution for this. Let's move on to the, to the, to the measure, to the new measure. Uh, generally, you know, the mesh is essential for every finite element uh, software or application. The number of elements, type of elements, and the quality itself uh, lead to some level of the discretization issue compared to continuous solution. So uh, in Idea Statica, uh, a new adaptive measure uh, has been implemented that uh, adapts the mesh according to the shape of the discontinuity uh, region and optimizes the number of the elements so uh, that, that at least four elements describe the stress on the smallest edge 
it leads to the increasing number of the elements in the parts where the singularity areas as the opening or support appear and the reduction of the elements number in the, the other area of the uh, global uh, global detail or global discontinuity. On the other hand, this measure uh, removes the triangular elements and replaces them with the quad elements, which describes the stress state uh, for the same number of elements more accurately, and the calculation procedure is faster. So this is, or it was the new measure uh, in the application idea statica detail, and we can move on to the member. So, uh, you know that the material such as a concrete uh, or rebars changes its uh, physical properties when it's exposed to fire. So, finding out the temperature distribution across, across the section and uh, reducing the properties of the concrete and the, and the rebars is a difficult task that most engineers solve with, you can say, simplified methods that are very conservative or even fail to solve these problems because they don't have a solution and it's uh, really hard. So uh, we can announce that the thermal analysis is out and the limits uh, have been broken in the design and the code check of concrete structures exposed to fire. So the analysis is valid for uh, all 1D members like beams, columns, so you can also do the frames. And from the point of view of the analysis, um, this is the non-stationary heat transfer where uh, we consider non-linear material diagrams for uh, steel and uh, concrete. I mean, for, I mean for rebars and the concrete. And uh, there is also used the material degradation based on the temperature, uh, which is calculated based on this analysis. So uh, you're getting a temperature field across the across the section, and according to the temperature, you were you you know exactly what is the material degradation uh, in the concrete and uh, how we decrease, let's say, the modulus of the elasticity of the rebars and the strength and the other the other parameters which are really important for a, for a structure for the physics behind. Um, so uh, this is a member. Uh, the new the new analysis save you save you the time and also the material because this is a more advanced analysis. So you will get more precise precise outputs than from the hand calcs and uh, the other the other approaches which are simplified. Okay. Uh, what we can say next is uh, also it's regarding uh, the member. So uh, if you are designing the frames or uh, continuous members, and uh, generally you don't know what, what is the redistribution of the internal forces uh, based on the correct section. So this is the solution uh, precisely for you. So no more estimation, no more estimation and uh, code uh, and code equations for redistribution of internal forces and reduction of the stiffness. Uh, you can design and code check these beams and frames using uh, material nonlinear analysis and get the proper redistribution of the of the internal forces. As you can see, uh, the distinguish between the linear and the nonlinear analysis where the moments are redistributed based on the amount of the reinforcement and also uh, the cracks. <clears throat> uh, so um, the implementation has been started with the simplified methods uh, according to the analytical equations for shear and torsion. And uh, the upcoming step will be a fully uh, FEA analysis of the member with consideration of all internal forces and it will lead to the complete nonlinear solution uh, of these of these of these members. So let's move to the last improvements or last development, last features, uh, and these are haunches. So uh, right now you can design uh, and code check uh, the structures, which has some tapered tapered shape or tapered uh, cross sections. Uh, it's valid for beams and the columns, and also for for frames. Uh, 
We have also some adaptive uh, reinforcement, which uh, keep the line of the edges on the section. So it's very fast procedure to design a reinforcement uh, in, the, in the cross section and in the whole beam. And you can perform the linear and the nonlinear uh, analysis on these members. So you're getting uh, more design options uh, on your project. So uh, let's move on to the first uh, example. It's a um, serviceability limit state for pre-stressed members or pre-stressed details in the application idea statica detail. So uh, let's start. So we have a beam, it's a T section. Uh, we have three load cases. One is permanent, second is variable, and the third is the pre-stressing. You can pre-stress the structure with the pre or post tangent tendons. You will create a three combinations, one for ultimate limit state, second for service element limit state, which is characteristic and the quasi-permanent, and use the partial factors for the combinations to create a non-linear combinations. Uh, yeah, it's done. You can move to reinforcement. In the reinforcement, uh, the rebounds has been predefined and also the pre-stressing tendons, but if you want to define another, so you can use this option and select the pre-stressing tendon like, like the entity. From the point of view of the first pre-stressing tendon, uh, I have some pretension tendons, you have four, four strands in the layer uh, with the anchorage stress 1.2 gigapascals and the blanky teeth length to meter. And the second tendon is a parabola of the second degree, it's a post tangent tendon with the seven strands uh, in the duct. And uh, the short term losses are calculated automatically and also is related to the partial loaded areas where, where is increased the strength of the concrete uh, because of three axial stresses. Yeah. So here are the parameters for uh, short term losses, which should be defined. And you, we can move on. We can move on through code check. Uh, at first, in the settings, uh, has been added a new tab, new coefficients for uh, pre-stressing steel, and also some new features like uh, neglecting stress, stress for stress code check for partial loaded areas for service service limit, limit state from the point of view of stress limitations. Uh, yeah, I proceeded to code check, and in the stress. Uh, limitations you can see long term and the short term uh, short term behavior of uh, of the concrete and the tendon and also the code checks according to the relevant relevant co uh, code uh, right now it's according to the clause 7.2 uh, to 5 yeah so you're getting the stress in the tendons for long term and the short term uh, effect uh, you can see it uh, right now you can also input the creep coefficients for pre-stressing and also for permanent load cases uh, differently and the cracks very important code check you can see the maximal cracks it's in the area of the pretension tendons and also the decompression code check which guarantee that the tendon is inside the compression area of the concrete so every green ticks are fulfilled here and the decompression is ensured. And also nonlinear deflections. You can see the deflect shape because of the pre-stressing uh, with consideration of the cracks in the, in the model. So everything can be displayed and uh, sure, the, uh, the report like reinforcement, tendon properties, but mainly the code checks for service limit limit state are published here, uh, generated and very detailed expressed yeah so it was it was the detail and uh, pre-stressing so right now you can i would like to show the thermal analysis in a member so let's move on so i will create a new project in the member i will address the name and uh, yeah select the concrete member not the steel and turn on the take fire fire design. It's really important. Set the fire resistant class, R120. Uh, select the geometry, if it's beam or column or frame, and uh, change the cross section. It can be arbitrary uh, section. I have chosen the T section, very simple. 
and to run the project. The first combination is for ultimate limit state, but you need to specify that it's ultimate limit state combination here. And uh, you copy this load case and decrease the load and also specify that the check type will be fire resistance, very important. Uh, right now, there is no reinforcement inside the section, so it has to be reinforced very quickly. Uh, you use the predefined templates and you can see your reinforcement, which is according to the code provisions. And right now it's very important to set up the initial conditions like temperature and uh, select the member which will be exposing to the fire and also the edges which will be exposed to the fire. This is really, this is the initial condition for uh, initializing of the calculation. It's very important. Uh, after that, you will move to the code check and select the geometrical nonlinear and material nonlinear analysis. But at first, you will check the fire design where you can select a fire curve. And the, according to the ISO, we have a free type of the curves, also material degradation according to code or by, by the user input, you can use your own um, material degradation. Uh, at first, you run the material nonlinear analysis and get the results for ultimate limit state and fire combination. Right now, I would like to display the temperature field where you can see the maximal value here or maximal temperature. But if I would like to see more detailed values, I will click on the fiber and see the redistribution of the temperature field over the section where you can see the temperature in every layer of the of the section. And according to that, if the material degradation will appear there and yeah, you will get a code check according to that. Also for concrete and the reinforcement, after that, I will run the geometric material only in your analysis with the imperfection like the last step and see see the results yeah so this is this is the procedure you can also see the results for ultimate limit state in the concrete if i would like to see for fire just just switch the combination you can see and the fire fire uh fire effects serves as the load or the deformation uh for this member so you will you will see the normal forces in the beam because of the temperature yeah you can see that it's like a temperature load there from the non-stationary heat transfer analysis and also you can see the results in the in the rebars <clears throat> and of course of course uh the report it's very it's very important so jump into the report and see the structure initial conditions, uh, results, and fire design, yeah, it's there. It's very, it's very important. So this is it. And uh, I would like to sum it up, uh, what we have in the concrete, uh, what are the benefits? So uh, you're getting a complete code check of the pre-stress details in general. So it's very important in general and a uh, new measure which brings you more accurate uh, results and the faster solution which saves, saves you time and uh, also the thermal analysis which is Bernoulli new analysis where you can design and code check non-standard beams non-standard sections uh, according to the finite elements and get more accurate results than from the simplified methods so uh, this is it I think we have another poll. Uh, I will pass the word to Adam. Adam, are you here? Of course I am. <laughs> so <laughs> let's let's launch another poll. Uh, so you see the question uh, which says, which approach do you use to treat the fire resistance of concrete members? All right, so question for you. How do you do it? Oh, how did you do it until now? Do you use steps and charts, some simple methods or, or some simple equations uh, as per code as is described there or some advanced numerical methods or you just don't do this? So let me launch the poll. 
So you can start voting. Lucas, what what is your what was your preferred approach? Or what do you see as a as a common practice? Uh, my preferred approach. So colleagues. yeah, I I used I used some simplified methods and the tips also, but for me it's very interesting these advanced numerical methods behind. Yeah, so I'm uh, I'm thinking that it will be advanced and numerical methods, but we will see. All right, all right. Almost, or well, more than half of people voted. So let's wait a few more seconds and let me close this poll and show you the results, which look like this. So, <laughs> surprised, Lucas. Uh, I can't see the uh, right now. Yeah, simply simple methods. Yeah, sure. So so many so many people is using uh, simply simplified methods like uh, is a is a term of five hundred. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, can imagine that it All works. Right. But yeah, yeah, it works. But it's laborious, right? Yeah. Yeah. So now I've got a tool for you to save time and do it more elegant way let's say and also 30 percent of people says they don't do it at all so they probably so avoid maybe they will start they will start maybe yeah with this <laughs> maybe they're simple. looking for a tool how to do that <laughs> <laughs> now it's here tool. yeah yeah you're right <laughs> all right that's cool all right uh so i'm going to hide this and take back the presenter Mm -hmm. All right, and uh, I'll continue with the third part, which is about the BIM links. And this is going to be rather short because uh, in this uh, minor version 22.1, our development team focused mainly on the background of the BIM links. So they spend a lot of time improving uh, the processes and the data transfer and all these things, which are not very visible to us and our users, but uh, they did a great job. And next to that, they were able to improve at least slightly some of the um, hand-on functions you have there. So it's mainly the user experience improvements in checkbots, how you handle that application, some uh, better geometry recognition, and so on. I'll show you that. And next to that, IOM, our platform for any developers, programmers, or skilled engineers that like to link their tools and softwares to Idea Statica. This has been also improved. Uh, this means our API, which is now able to take the parametric inputs from Rhino and Grasshopper and all these fancy stuffs. There was even a webinar about this showing how to do that. So feel free to uh, browse that on our YouTube channel or on our web page and learn more and also find information in the uh, support center on our web page about this. And now for each of the small improvements, uh, user experience, uh, experience that is uh, bulk selection of connection items in, um, in checkbox, right mouse button activated and the menu you can use there. Uh, integration of Bentley Start Pro, which was uh, a bit painful uh, procedure is now automatic. So just one click and that's it. You have it there. And the, all of this means as we hope more fun to use this checkbot application for BIM links. Uh, just a short demo. Um, I can select now multiple connections in the 3D window. That's not a miracle, but it wasn't there before. And what I can do is, for example, select all these four anchorings in my model 
and in the right click export them into a single file of idea Statica connection application and send this to for example my colleague sitting in the next floor who is an expert in designing anchorings and uh, base plates and so on and he can do the job for me all right so this is now again a bit easier uh, what's uh, in the background as i mentioned is this bim api as we call it uh, that's uh, a new uh, let's say process of importing the data so now for each of the softwares uh, that we are linked to such as the engineer start pro tecla uh, sap 2000 etefs uh, and all the rest each of them have let's say a dedicated reading api to um, draw all the or drag all the data into um, the data transfer and then the rest so processing the data conversion of materials and so on then displaying the structure model and so on this is all um, now merged into one common process so in any case if there's any bug or any improvements this will uh, be efficiently done for all the BIM links and for you there is a new messaging so you can see what's going on during the import and a better conversion table of materials and cross sections and so on all right so that's just to mention that was the main um, job of this minor version and also, thanks to this, there is a better geometry recognition, especially for um, non-symmetrical and special cross sections. So they are now uh, imported correctly in red, correctly. All right, that was for the BIM links highlights. Uh, one more information for the current released version from Monday of this week, 22.1. These are uh, the supported um, third-party software versions. You can find this tab in the release notes on our webpage in the support center. And this will be, of course, updated with coming patches. All right, let's sum this up for the Vim links. We hope you will enjoy these workflows with Checkbot even more and that you will do more in less time with these reliable BIM links that really are effective. All right, one more thing, bonus feature <laughs> that is above uh, the uh, groups steel concrete beam links. This is uh, something that we added to all our applications. The whole package of Idea Statica now has this search bar uh, on the top um, ribbon or on the top of the window. So you can type any um, word there, press enter and uh, the browser uh, opens for you and shows you the answers in our support center so it's kind of a online um, help to give you direct answers to your questions and save time looking for information so another great new and we have one last poll at the end of this session so question is for what type of tasks do you use idea static apl applications the most so is it rather design of concrete members uh, reinforced, reinforced concrete pre-stressed concrete so on or steel connections or is it rather concrete details and discon discontinuity regions or you don't use idea static at all so let me launch this poll and 
let me ask you uh, for, for your vote. <clears throat> okay, I, I think I, I guess I know what will be the answer, but uh, let's see. <laughs> I think the design of concrete details, right? This is what we're <laughs> We'll see, we'll see. Uh, oh, that, that was sort of a internal joke because, um, you know, that uh, the steel connections is the, is the leading application in our portfolio. And, but the concrete is getting more important as well. So I'll close this voting now. Thank you for your votes and let's share the results with you. Lucas, any comments? Yeah, I'm probably. surprised. I'm surprised. <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably no surprise. Uh, thank you for this. And with, but what is um, nice from my perspective, we've got 5% of people here that don't use Aesthetic at all. And maybe if they liked our presentation, that can help them in their in their job. All right, let's try this and continue here. We're uh, almost at the end. What's coming next? If you like our webinars, uh, we will have three more till the end of this year, uh, two for steel, one for concrete. So stay tuned and we'll get the mailings and notification on our webpage and in the application as well. And last thing, questions and answers. So I guess we covered uh, all or most of the questions during the webinar. Our colleagues were responding uh, and typing you the answers in the chat. And we can now uh, select some of the questions and read them loud and answer them and show you the, um, the answers. So let me see. All right. So there's an interesting question. Uh, let me read it aloud from Magnus. Is it or will it be possible to specify the fire design in the connection uh, using the temperature curve uh, or in example, only the resistance time? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, for, for now, as you have seen, um, the fire design resistance in uh, connection and member works that you input the temperature, right? So the answer is no for now, but uh, we will be um, collecting your uh, response to this new analysis and observe how this is used. And, and uh, then we will react possibly, and we can add this uh, way of input to, to add the, um, uh, the curves or actually the, the resistance time or uh, the res resistance um, um, standard, right? Okay, another question. This is regarding concrete. Uh, which finite elements are used to simulate the cracks in reinforced concrete? Uh, James, are you thinking in the in the I guess the uh, detail or or the other apps like a beam? Because in the in the detail we are using uh, uh, two D two D finite elements like uh, quad elements uh, on the plane stress tasks. And uh, for cracks, we are using a tension cord and the pullout, uh, pullout model for modeling of the cracks. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I guess this was regarding detail since you yeah. were uh, 
presenting that. And I guess you can also find more information in the support center about this. Yeah, sure. You can find it in the in the theoretic background uh, on our support center resources. Okay. All right. So uh, you can navigate the user there as well. All right. And one more question. Um, okay here from Amir. Um, can we create one report uh, includes the horizontal tying check with other checks or it has to be different report? All right, maybe I can demonstrate this to you. So let me minimize this and open. This is possible in short. <laughs> the answer is yes. Uh, so for example, I have uh, this connection and um, I have designed it and calculate the stress strain analysis and then the standard code check. I've got the results, all is okay. And now I wanna do uh, the horizontal tying check for this one and put all of that into one report. So what I do is make a copy is of this project item. So now I, I have two of them in this file. I switch to horizontal tying, make sure uh, this is the analyzed member. I input the horizontal tying force, tensile force of 500 kilonewtons. Uh, can calculate this model and this is all right. So I go to the report and now by default, the report is generated for the current selected project item, which is now the horizontal tying, but I can here switch to all. So now I will have all the project items in my um, report or selected. And here I can select if I want uh, one of them, all of them, or maybe I have 20 of them here and I can, I want to, uh, have the the report just for a few of them. All right, so now I have the stress strain and horizontal tying in one report. So that's the way how to do that. All right, we are running out of time for this webinar. So let me conclude this. Thank you very much for coming today. Uh, we're happy to present to you what our development team uh, has done in uh, the last month. And we hope you will enjoy this version and we hope to see you in coming webinars. So have a nice rest of the day and bye-bye. See you, bye-bye. Have a nice day.